As soon as this iconic photo hit the internet, some on the left began calling the attack staged. Why? Because the moment was undeniably good for Trump, and every moment that's good for them has to be staged. The best they could do to make Biden look cool was to give him sunglasses and a sweet treat. It's the same thing they did for Air Bud. And like Joe, Kamala is not a compelling person, so it's no surprise that her campaign has to be astroturfed. The day she announced, there was a huge influx of campaign donations through Act Blue, which besides being the only direction James Cameron gave to the actors in Avatar, is also a Democratic political action committee. A while back, James O'Keefe showed that it looked like they were using the names of real donors on donations they didn't make to make it all look like grassroots support. Does it sound about right that there's been 18,000 contributions in the amount of like $170,000? No, 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 no. Yeah, she was listed as having donated over 18,000 times, sometimes 10 donations a day, and she was pretty emphatic there. No, 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 no. Five no's. For reference, that's two more no's than Amy Wine house gave when they told her to go to rehab. And that lady isn't the only one it's happened to. So that's the group that gave Kamala her record donation push after she announced. But then there's the other parts of her campaign. Yes, she's done a couple of rallies that were more just free rap concerts, at which she did a fake Southern accent. And we're gonna do it again in 2024. Remember, this woman was raised in Quebec, Canada, and her parents are Indian and Jamaican, which makes me want to hear her real accent. I assume it's some kind of mashup between the Cool Runnings guys, George St. Pierre, and Apu from The Simpsons. But even with these appearances, she still hasn't taken a single question since she started running. Thank you all. Uh, Madam Vice President, will you be meeting Evan and Paul when they return? And remember, she's still the vice president. She also was supposed to show up at the black journalist thing that Trump went to, but she didn't. We'll get to that later. The main thrust of the campaign this week has been a series of Zoom calls. And like most long Zoom calls, each one could have been an email. They had calls entitled, Win with Black Women, Win with Black Men, and then White Women Answer the Call, featuring Megan Rapinoe dressed like Pink and Pink dressed like James Carville. Notice they went in order of their oppression scale. Black women, black men, white women, and now at the bottom of the scale, the group they're not going to win, white dudes. The title of the call was White Dudes for Harris. And for this one, they pulled out even more celebrities. There was Jeff Bridges, a white dude who played a white dude named Dude, Sean Astin, a white dude who played a white dude named Rudy, and Josh Gad, a white dude who plays all the parts Jonah Hill is too skinny for now. They also had Mark Hamill, who seems to have been spending too much time with Biden recently. Idolizes Victor Orban and and uh, uh, the, the, the there's some things the background blur can't hide. And Mayor Pete Buttigieg. As you know, he's the Secretary of Transportation, and he's the guy who adopted two boys with this guy. So he's an expert on both traffic and trafficking. Neat. The only liberal white dude missing was Jeffrey Tubin, who skipped this Zoom call for some reason. So yes, it was dumb, it was lame, but hey, at least they didn't start singing. The campaign has been so reliant on Zoom, I wouldn't be surprised if she came up with some Zoom-themed campaign slogans, like Harris 2024. Can you guys hear me? Notice that Kamala wasn't at any of these events. And again, she's taken zero questions. Biden, though, has taken one. President Trump has said repeatedly that he could have gotten the hostages out without giving anything in exchange. What do you say to that? What do you say to President Trump? Why didn't he do it when president? These two take a lot of propping up and protecting. They're in trouble once they start opening their mouths. But what drives the left crazy about Trump's campaign is that it's full of unstageable moments. Moments that are not only not staged to make him look good, many of them are staged to make him look bad, including his recent appearance at the National Association of Black Journalists. The event started 35 minutes late, and when it started, this was the first question. You have told four congresswomen of color who were American citizens to go back to where they came from. You have used words like animal and rabbit to describe black district attorneys. You've attacked black journalists, calling them a loser, saying the questions that they ask are, quote, stupid and racist. You've had dinner with a white supremacist at your Mar-a-Lago resort. So my question, sir, now that you are asking black supporters to vote for you, why should black voters trust you? after you have used language like that. Now, at this point, most Republicans would have spent the whole interview trying to prove how not racist they are. Here's what Trump did. First of all, I don't think I've ever been asked a question so in, in such a horrible manner, a first question. <laughs> you don't even say, hello, how are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network. 
So Trump goes to this event that's designed to be hostile to him, invited under false pretenses, and he owned the room pretty quickly. Maybe the noise wasn't all positive, but it sounded like it. We also know it was a success because straight away the media put out a slew of articles saying it went terribly. But even if he doesn't get a single vote from that room, he certainly won't lose any. Once in a while, it's important to realize that most of what we're seeing is easy to fake, but this is the kind of thing that can't be. There were people who accused Trump of faking the shooting because they couldn't bear that it was real, and they couldn't fake a moment half that good. Like a short kid who spreads a rumor that the captain of the basketball team wears lifts. But even the events that are planned in advance to be a huge embarrassment for Trump, the debate, the black journalist thing, end up making him look great. Trump's response to the assassination attempt was a huge moment that the Trump campaign couldn't have created. It wasn't planned, from his end anyway, but it's a defining moment that we'll remember for years. The regime campaign depends on their candidate playing a minimal role. Trump's campaign depends on him as a person. One side is making memes out of a genuinely compelling person, the other side is trying to make memes from the top down. For example, what does Kamalot mean? Not to mention Kamala Namanon. They can't plan bad moments for Trump, and they can't subvert his good moments, but they're really trying to create good moments for Kamala. I've seen a lot of old clips of Kamala, but the only recent ones I've seen make her look stupid. But is she doing anything else? I can't think of any good moment she's had other than the endorsements she would have gotten anyway. Can you think of any? Uh, uh, the, 